We're about to get to our headliner in one moment. Um, I was having a conversation over there, and I thought I'd share with you guys. Uh, we're having a conversation about the uh, ever elusive uh, pleasure of doggy style. Does anybody like doggy style in the house? Anyone? She's like, <laughs> I like she put her hands up like Hitler. Like she was like, yes, I love that. Love that shit. Well, I'm a big. I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Like, I mean, it's okay in certain instances and in certain drunken nights and when you don't want to see them at all, but my whole thing is that I just don't like, for lack of a better term, I don't like their asshole staring at me in my face. Like, I don't like looking directly at it. Why? No, lies. Lies? Oh, I'm lying? Easy. Don't put my personal business out on the street. I've only been to Lake County once. Calm down. So, ladies and <laughs> oh, gay joke. <laughs> so, no, my whole thing is just that I just don't like it staring in my face and I'm thinking like a whole situation where I'm with a girl and I'm, you know, in that precarious position like doing that. And I'm like, oh, just stop winking at me. Seriously, like, can you stop winking at me? And she's like, what? My eyes are closed. Like, I'm not winking at you. I'm like, I'm not talking about those eyes. I'm talking about this eye. Like, stop winking at me. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, your brown eye. Like, are you serious? Your brown eye is winking at me. It's opening and shutting and opening and shutting. And I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And she's like, what are you talking about? What is a brown eye? I'm like, dude, you don't know, like, other terms for your asshole? Like, you have no idea? I thought you were smart. And she's like, of course I'm smart. I went to Northwestern. And I'm like, well, I'm fucking you doggy style, so you might as well went to Robert Morris College, right? Because for, for all I care. I love telling that joke because I love picking out who actually graduated from Morris, Robert Morris College. And them just either giving me a really shitty look or just hanging their head in shame. Love it. I love it. Silence. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your headliner? Come on. Come on. Help put your hands together louder. Are you ready for your headliner? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a guy who I actually, the first time I ever, ever saw him go on was the first time I ever did stand up. So it's kind of cool to have him here. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Salty Peters. Ladies and gentlemen. shit when you're at work. Like co-workers. When the fuck did these people show up? And we all have that co-worker that's just so stupid you don't know how this person managed to be conceived. Cause that that was their dad's fastest swimmer. Like how dumb were the other sperms that that's the motherfucker that made it? What were they doing? Like swimming around in circles and shit? But the dumbest thing at my job, the dumbest thing is motivational posters. We all have one. And they put one up in my job called Teamwork. Together we accomplish great things. With a picture of the Great Wall of China. <laughs> like, I get the idea, but the Great Wall of China was built by slaves. <laughs> and half of them died in the process. Then they used the dead ones to stick the bricks together. Like, that shit's not teamwork. <laughs> That's like getting a picture of the Native Americans on the Trail of Tears and they calling it Road Trip. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's my only headshot that I have up there on the TV right now, which I'm so broke I can't afford decent headshots. That's a picture of my wedding. <laughs> like, that's how that picture came about. Like, I, just, I can make fun of that. People ask me, like, were you a fucking prom? I'm like, no, my wedding. <laughs> I love that picture. It's so embarrassing. I hate it, actually. Oh, man. Any, 
we got any Catholics here? Anybody grow up Catholic, raised Catholic, practicing Catholic? I was, yeah, a couple. I was raised really, really Catholic. And when I say that I'm uh, raised very, very Catholic, you guys, what I mean is that my dad is a Catholic deacon. And uh, in case you don't know what a deacon is, that's like an overgrown altar boy. <laughs> so that's old enough to fight back if the priest tries to touch him. <laughs> so, but like growing up really Catholic with my dad being a deacon, man, I was at church a lot. I was at seriously like four times a week at church. So I figure I got a good line of credit with the Almighty, right? The only problem is just like every other line of credit I've ever had, I'm managing to fuck it up. I didn't even know how bad my credit was until God sent his collection officers to my house. You guys might know them, Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> I love when Jehovah Witnesses come to my house because I like to mess with them a little bit. But the last time they came to my house, they screwed me up, you know, because they always come in a group of two, right? One of the dudes was blind. I'm like, dude, you're supposed to be a fucking witness. <laughs> like, can you call yourself a witness when you're blind? I don't think you're witnessing much, dude. That's like a Jehovah's Listener, okay? <laughs> so I'm really close with my dad, too. Uh, he just got himself an HD TV uh, earlier in the year. So uh, I went over there to set it up for him. And I'm setting him up, right? And the first thing that my parents wanted to do was watch the home movies on the new TV. They want to see what it looks like. So I put it on the TV. And uh, my mom's not exactly what we call technologically savvy. Like the other day she asked me, she's like, uh, what's wifey? I'm like, wifey, why are you talking about 1990s vernacular, mom? Like, I just explained bling bling to you the other day. Like, baby steps, right? She's like, no, I'm a Panera Bread the other day, and they said they were advertising free wifey. I didn't know if I should order some. I'm like, you talking about Wi-Fi? <laughs> like, so that's my mom, right? So I set up the TV, and we're watching home movies, and my mom, she sits there and she goes, this widescreen TV, I don't like it, take it back, it's weird, I hate it, take it back. It makes me look weird, and my dad, he doesn't miss a beat. He goes, that's because the video isn't formatted to fit the TV. This TV's formatted to fit your fat ass. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, dad. Erectile dysfunction really takes away that filter. <laughs> So then I, like, for Christmas I got him a Blu-ray, and I was like, what movie should I get him? And I got Blu-ray, uh, Braveheart on Blu-ray, because I love that movie. It's like the best war movie ever. And it's beautiful scenery, so it's gonna look great, right? So I put it on, and my dad's like, oh, you know what, I appreciate it, but I don't want to be ungrateful on Christmas, but I hate this movie. I, it's like, like my, I hate this movie, I hate it so much. How do you hate Braveheart? Like, the great epic war movie, Mel Gibson, before he was anti-Semitic. <laughs> or before we knew it, like, you know, so he goes, oh, I hate it because they capture, they torture, and then they kill William Wallace at the end of the movie. Okay, I get that, but your favorite movie, Dad, as a Catholic deacon, is Passion of the Christ. That's the same ending! <laughs> That's like meeting a girl that loves Twinkies but doesn't suck dick. <laughs> same ending. <laughs> I was raised really Catholic, and I have an eight-year-old kid, and uh, my mom has been giving me a lot of crap, because I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore, so she's given me a lot of shit about, like, when my daughter's supposed to make her first communion, and I just, like, when she gets old enough, I'll teach her about different religions, she can choose whatever she wants, pretty uh, open-minded like that, but she's giving me a lot of shit about it, she's like, when is my granddaughter going to make her first communion, I want to see her make her first communion, and, like, my niece is a year older, so she just made hers, and so, like, I went to it, and I get it. I get, like, my, why my mom wants that, you know, because, like, the kids look adorable. They're all dressed in white, you know, especially the little girls. They look so cute in their white dresses. And if my daughter ends up being anything like her mom, like, it's the only time she can wear a white dress in church, like, with any dignity. <laughs> 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 <I don't care. laughs> oh, if you want to, I wrote that joke. I said it in front of my daughter. I didn't show up on <laughs> It's hilarious. I love that one. Uh, that was funny to me. That was for me. I do that one for myself. No, but uh, like I said, my daughter's eight, right? And I'm 29. So if you do the math, 29 minus eight equals unplanned parenthood. And, <laughs> and like my daughter was born when I was in college. And so uh, a lot of people, well, at the time, especially a few years after, they asked us a lot of questions. They're like, oh, was that a difficult time for you guys? Was that a really tough time for you guys? Like, the question there without really asking is like, was abortion an option for us? And it wasn't at all for us. Like, personal decision for us, we did not consider abortion. Now that my daughter's eight, I think about killing that motherfucker like once a week. <laughs> like, she does not shut up. She's just always running her mouth, and this real smart ass. 
I, I, I love comic book movies. I love comic books, I love comic book movies, right? And earlier in the year, I'm growing up my hair. And at the time is when Thor came out, so I took my daughter to go see Thor. We watched every comic book movie that comes out. So um, I tried to impress her, I tried to like, you know, be like cool or whatever, I think she would like get a kick out of it. And so I'm like, hey, you know, Dad, see Thor? That's why Daddy's growing his hair out, because he wants to be like Thor. And this little smart ass looks at me and she goes, yeah, because the hair is what you're missing. <laughs> you're an asshole, kid. <laughs> so, but like, her mom and I, we, uh, we broke up shortly after she was born, like, she was like a year old, and uh, we just didn't make it. And, uh, like, a year after we broke up, her mom ended up getting married. And I hated her ex, her, her husband, like, I hated it for no good reason, just because it was my ex's husband, right? Like, I just hated the guy for no reason. But, like, after the last several years, like, like seven years have passed, and, like, I've gotten to know the guy. Um, he stays at home with uh, her and with, like, they've had a couple kids since then. So whenever I go pick up my daughter, he's the guy that's there. Like, he's always there. Um, he's always the one. Like, the mom, uh, my ex works all the time. So I've gotten to know him really, like, a lot. And I talk to him, like, he'll usually invite me in the house and I have a beer or whatever. He's a really cool guy. He's, like, the kind of guy I could be best friends with if he didn't have such horrible taste in women. <laughs> because I didn't realize, like, I'm from Chicago, and I didn't realize that uh, this is, like, the little pocket of Indiana that's still on Central Time. So, they're like, I, like, I get out of work, and I got here crazy early, so I was walking around, and uh, holy shit, you guys have a lot of antique stores in this little area. <laughs> I'm like, is there really that much antique stuff? Because it looks like everyone just got a license to have a garage sale 24-7 and operate that as a business. <laughs> it was crazy. And then I'm like, I was walking up right here, uh, what is this street? Uh, Main Street, right? And I'm walking up, and then I got scared shitless in front of the courthouse. I didn't realize you guys had a life-size nativity out there. And that scared the bejesus out of me. I thought someone was going to jump at me and like grab me, and then I'm like, oh no, no, it's just baby Jesus. He's good. And then all of a sudden, like, the, yeah, that was the first thing. I, don't, I thought someone said it. Like, I, I don't know why. Like, it, no one really has never occurred to me, but I just wanted to steal baby Jesus just to see what that would be like. Like, I just want to, like, people report that on the news all the time, like, what would that be like? But he's, like, a one solid piece of the little basket they have him in, so I'm like, fuck, I can't do that. Like, I would totally take him baby Jesus, but the whole basket would have looked too conspicuous. <laughs> but, uh, I was thinking about, speaking of him, Jesus and Christmas and all that, and God, I was thinking about God, and, uh, you guys ever notice when, like, things are going great in someone's life, they give God all the credit, right? It's always glory to God. But when things go bad, like, God never seems to take any of the blame. Like, if that's not proof God's a woman... <laughs> one guy not getting late tonight. We put that a little too loud. Two. He just flashed me his tits. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm kidding. Like, I love women. My wife's a woman, so that's good. That helps, right? That's always good. But, uh, like, women get away with some crazy shit, and, like, men don't call them out on it. Like, women can say things like, 40 is the new 30. And, like, men, we just let you do it. We don't call you out. But it doesn't work the other way, you know? Like, I can't go up to you and be like, hey, baby, broke is the new wealthy. <laughs> I'm rich in here. <laughs> Not gonna work, because she's just gonna look at me and be like, well, that's great, but you're never gonna get in here. <laughs> And like, animal print clothing, 2012, and that shit is still sexy? Like, when did zebras become sexy? And who are you trying to attract when you dress like this, ladies? Like, the crocodile hunter? Because <laughs> I gotta tell you, like, if you're in a bar or a club, and a guy looks at you and he's like, girl, you look hot in that zebra dress, what he's really saying is, girl, I like Animal Planet more than I legally should. <laughs> And who knows, maybe it is sexy. Maybe it's sexy and I'm just losing touch now that I'm like almost 30. Because while 30 is not actually old, it is old enough to lose touch with like that 19, 20, or 21 year old generation. And what did it for me were the dance crazes. Because say what you will about my generation, but when we were growing up, we had amazing dance crazes. We had the butterfly, uh uh, that's all, let me see that Tootsie Roll. That was the shit. But what do the kids have in the last few years? What do they have? They got Superman, that ho! And the stanky leg! The stanky leg! Like, how is that a dance craze? When I was in junior high, stanky leg is something I got from dry humping. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. Cell phones, man, cell phones are kicking my ass too. Like, I can't keep up with the technology. It just advances so quick and so fast and shit. And like, here's the thing, like, I had the same shitty cell phone for like seven years. It did nothing fancy. It made calls and I sent texts, like, that was it. I did not have 4G internet. I did not have Facebook. If my wife was too tired for sex, there was no app for that. <laughs> And nobody even uses their phone to talk anymore. They just use it to update their Facebook status. You know, like, oh, I hate my job. I wish my boss was dead. LOL. Like, LOL. LOL has got to be the most abused thing of all time. It is the um of the internet generation. You know, like, I saw my friend put this on Facebook. True story. She said, I'm going to the hospital to visit my mom. I hope my kids behave and don't act like monsters. LOL. <laughs> That shit's not funny. If your kids don't behave, you don't blog about it. You punch those motherfuckers right in the throat. <laughs> like, my dad was old school. He didn't put up with any of that shit. Before we went anywhere, before, like, before we got in, he would give me a preemptive strike in the back of the head, like, Listen here, you motherfucker. Listen here, you little rat. I don't know if you're mine. get in that restaurant, people are going to assume that you are. So I don't want you running around. I don't want you acting fool. You better not embarrass me. Like, that is Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> oh. I've, uh, I've been reading the news a lot lately because Comcast turned off my cable. <laughs> and I can't afford to turn it back on. And uh, I read, like, my favorite story that still came out, I read this the other day. They uh, put Tilikum the Whale back into the water back at SeaWorld. Like, he's back in action. And you guys remember what happened last year at uh, SeaWorld? Tilikum killed the trainer. And, like, here's the thing with it. Um, Tilikum already killed two people before that happened down at SeaWorld. So he's like a serial killer whale. And nobody saw that shit coming. And then, like, Dawn the trainer knew that information and she got into the water with him anyway. Like, that's not a tragedy, the way the media made it sound. That goes to show you that even with animals, women sit here and think, like, oh no, not me. I'm different. I'm gonna change him. <laughs> Dawn and Tilikum are like the Drew and Stacey Peterson of the sea. <laughs> Too soon. I haven't found her for like four years. That shit's not soon. <laughs> and like I read another story too. Okay. Uh, this lady got killed. Her, her son's an astronaut. He's out, he was out on a space mission when she got killed by a train. Like that sounds like a tragedy, right? But as you read on, it finds out that like she was on her way to a doctor when she came to a railroad crossing and didn't want to try and wait for the train and the bars were down so she tried to beat the two cars in front of her and beat it and wouldn't you know it, the train hit her and she died. Like that's not a tragedy, that's number 846 on a thousand ways to die. <laughs> Do you know how fucking stupid you have got to be to get killed by a train? It's got flashing lights, it honks a loud horn, it goes in a straight line on a track. It's not like the train all of a sudden made a left. <laughs> And what bothers me is that this kid, like, she, this lady passed on her DNA to a child that is now an astronaut. Like, that makes me not confident in NASA whatsoever. Like, all I'm saying is next time if you see a shuttle launch and that shit launches in reverse, you're gonna know whose dumbass kid was driving the shuttle that day. And to top it off, the kicker too, I don't know why, they, they didn't mention it in the whole article. At the end, they felt the need to mention that the lady with the fucked up driving skills was Asian. I was like, what? <laughs> that would've, like, that would've ended the story in the first two sentences. You should've started out with that. Would've been like, oh, totally makes sense, I get it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Let's see what I want. Oh, uh, products. I hate some of the stuff that they come out with. Um, like, right now, the, I see this in Chicago all the time. We got, like, a huge section of, like, really far-left liberals that, like, do stupid shit. And the dumbest thing that I could see anyone that, like, wants to help the environment, like that really green movement, is drive a smart car. Like, I hate that fucking car. I take shits bigger than that car. It looks like a micro machine on, like, come to life. Like, I had remote control cars and model cars I built bigger than that. And like, every time I see a person in that, like, you're, how does the person in the smart car look like a fucking idiot? All the time. Oh, it never fails. And then they came out with a GPS device called Magellan. You know, after Ferdinand Magellan, the famous world navigator that wanted to go all the way around the world and died halfway through his fucking trip. Why am I taking, like, 
directions from this guy. <laughs> like, why about follow your own directions, Magellan? Don't die on the defining trip of your life. Like, a, a GPS device named Magellan makes about as much sense as a convertible called the John F. Kennedy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. And, like, people do some stupid shit, and, like, I know, I have, it sounded like I was picking on the ladies earlier, but I don't, well, to be fair, like, man, we do a lot of fucking stupid things. Like, you ever see a rodeo? <laughs> like, I was watching a rodeo on TV one time, and this guy was on the Bronco, and he was, like, he was on the Bronco, and, like, he was on, he fell, like, two seconds in, in such a way, underneath the Bronco, and the hind legs came down and crushed him on his chest. It's like, how many paint chips as a child do you need to eat to make that a good fucking idea? Because I have never, ever in my life looked at a wild horse that big and thought, you know what? I think I could ride that. <laughs> That's not entirely true, but in my defense, that one time, the club was dark. <laughs> I had a lot to drink, and she was wearing a zebra print dress. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I want to say this, too, because it's not obvious by looking at me, you guys, but uh, I am Mexican-American. I know not a lot of people can tell just by looking at me, but I do say that so you feel comfortable with some of the racial shit that I'm about to say. <laughs> and, guys, crown point at, like, 9, almost 10 o'clock at night, all the Mexicans are still at work, so we're good. <laughs> Like, my cousins are probably still clearing tables over at the Olive Garden right now. We're fine. We're fine. But it throws people off, man. Ever since I was little, it's always thrown people off. It's not obvious by looking at me that I'm Mexican. Like, so much so, one time in third grade, I told my teacher, like, during, like, a, like an ethnic history type class lesson we're doing or whatever, and, like, where's everyone from? And I said, my mom's from Mexico. And she's like, no, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm Mexican. And she goes, well, you know what? If it makes you feel any better, I couldn't even tell. <laughs> Like, that was a compliment. I couldn't tell it's not a compliment. That's something you say if you accidentally get a transvestite prostitute. That's the Eddie Murphy defense. But my mom didn't immigrate here from Mexico. Um, and so, like, immigration right now, the reform issue is a big deal to me. But what I don't like is all the extremism that surrounds it. Because it never fails. You turn on the news, and they always get, like, a redneck from Arkansas, which is, like, first, like, I don't know why they're complaining, because who the fuck is trying to sneak into Arkansas? Like, you can't even get Americans to go to Arkansas. I don't think that's the problem there. But they're always like, oh, the Mexicans, they're going to ruin the country. They're going to ruin everything. Like, what the fuck is there left to ruin? We're not the ones that made Snooki famous. <laughs> and Sarah Palin decided to talk about this, too. When the whole thing was going on in Arizona, she actually used these words. She said that the governor of Arizona has the cojones to defend the border that President Obama does not. First of all, if we would, Sarah Palin like supports the English only thing. Don't use the word cojones in place of balls, dummy. Like, that doesn't make any sense. And why the fuck are you talking anyway, Sarah? Like, what would she ever do to stop Mexicans from getting into America? She couldn't stop Levi from getting into Bristol. <laughs> the thing is, we just need to know our ethnic history in this country, because it's not the first time that millions of immigrants come to America when their country's in a fucked up spot. You know, like the same thing happened with the Irish, right? And look at the Irish, they're doing just fine. Like, every March, we celebrate the most revered Irish tradition ever, day drinking. <laughs> yeah, like, let's do that shit on Cinco de Mayo too, right? Why not? I was at a show and I said that one time, and this guy yelled at me from the back of the club. He's like, yeah, that's right, dude. The Irish, we built this country. We didn't farm it. It's like, whoa. Whoa. Of course you didn't farm it. Like, you let the potatoes die. We're not going to let you get close to the wheat and the corn. <laughs> History. That's the thing. History. Yeah, it's all about knowing the history. Because like at the height of the recession, when the recession was at its worst, I got laid off and so did my wife. And we were pinching pennies trying to like keep our house and make our mortgage payment not get a foreclosed on, right? And it was very, very stressful. And so like I'm telling this to my friend, and my friend goes, you know what, let me take you out to the bar, I'm gonna get some drinks, get your mind off of it, it's on me. I'm like, awesome, well, you're like my best friend. So we're at the bar, and I'm still venting, like right when we get there, getting it off my chest. And then all of a sudden my friend turned into like this foreclosure expert which would have been great if he wasn't Native American. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, you're not the best authority to tell me how to keep my land. <laughs> That's like if I got safe 
sex advice from Magic Johnson. <laughs> you guys are an awesome crowd, because normally every room I do that Magic Johnson joke, they're like, ooh, like that was really bad and uncalled for. Like he was cheating on his wife. It's not like he was saving kids from a building and accidentally got it. <laughs> So I, I applaud you guys for not being sensitive to that one. That was awesome. And the thing is, like, I'm, we all need an our ethnic history, and, we, and I'm all for ethnic pride. We should all be proud of our heritage, proud of where we come from. Totally support it. Let's do that. But you guys ever, like, meet that guy that's just a little too proud? And it's like for shit he had nothing to do with, right? It's like the Mexican guy that sucks at math that goes, Yeah, the Mayas are my ancestors, and we invented the number zero. Good for you, Carlos. <laughs> Get back to work and that paycheck is gonna be zero. <laughs> I'm like, I support immigration reform, I do. Mexicans gotta stop doing stupid shit. Like going to immigration rallies, wanting to be legal citizens of America, with the Mexico flag wrapped around their shoulders. <laughs> do you know how stupid that is? That's like showing up to court for a DUI wearing a Corona shirt. <laughs> Tea party earlier, and uh, like they, some of the incongruency when it comes to politics is what really gets to me. The Tea Party is like the, the best example that we have right now out in the forefront. Is because uh, like when the whole debt thing's going on, and they're still complaining about the debt and the deficit, and everything has like I, I get it that you want to be for like small government, but they get a little too carried away with it. With like, well, how are we gonna pay back this debt? How are we ever gonna pay back our debt? Like, relax. We have Barack Obama. If anybody knows how to avoid their debt. <laughs> it's the guy that graduated from Harvard. You motherfuckers are racist. <laughs> so, what was it like? What got to me too was the healthcare debate when they're like, "Oh, no universal healthcare, no universal healthcare." But they also say that they're Christian, and as a Christian, you have to ask yourself, like, what would Jesus do? He would heal people. <laughs> Hey, Jesus, can you knock out my leprosy? Let me see who your provider is first. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, I think you know how I feel about crosses. And you're Muslim? Holy shit, that's not a network dog. I'm sorry. Like, no, he took care of that shit. Jesus knocked it out. <laughs> oh, man. Our society, like, we're weird, like, with some of the things that we do when it comes to sex uh, as a society. Like, um, I think we've all done this at some point in time, is videotape ourselves or taking sexy pictures or sexting is the big thing now. Uh, but you gotta be really careful with, like, who gets to keep that shit after a breakup. Because uh, this is a true story. This guy, uh, his girlfriend dumped him for another guy, so he got pissed off at her. And he wanted to get back at her, so he hacked into one of the electronic billboards and put up one of their sex tapes on it, and the entire thing played before the cops could take it down, because it was two minutes long. <laughs> now, I'm no expert on revenge, okay? I'm not the Count of Monte Cristo. But if I want to get back at my girlfriend with a sex tape, maybe I pick the one where I last more than two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that was his best one. Was he your friend or was that you? <laughs> You're like, that was me, I'm sorry. Why are you making fun of me? <laughs> that and like, um, I have friends now that like, as we're getting older, they still think they can date certain girls of like 18, 19 years old. And I'm like, that's really creepy as like 29, 30 years old, and you want to date an 18 year old? Like, that's really fucking disgusting. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would definitely fuck the shit out of an 18 year old. But I just wouldn't date one. Like, I can barely put up with some of the inane babble that comes out of the mouths of mature women. Like, I don't want to discuss the cultural significance of Hello Kitty. <laughs> that's not pillow talk to me. And like, I have some friends that are into virtue. Virgins too, that's what they want. They're like, dude, I totally want to date a virgin. I want to deflower a virgin. Like, why? They're like, because you're the first one there. Like, settle the fuck down, Columbus. <laughs> you're not discovering shit. There's a good chance Miss Gucci already got the coochie, okay? <laughs> See, when it comes to sex, like, I think of it as like when you're gonna hire a
hire a carpenter and you're doing some remodeling, you don't want a rookie carpenter that just got into a union. You want someone that has experience with wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That was more of a good point than joke, apparently. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of talking dirty in bed. I love it. I love to talk dirty in bed. But you guys ever been talking dirty and that shit goes in the wrong direction? Like, I was hooking up with this girl when I was in college, right? And uh, we wanted to role play to spice things up. But in college, if anyone's in college, you know you're broke. You don't have any money when you're in college. And so we're, we want to role play. And, uh, but we don't have the money for costumes, so we're doing that on a budget, and that never fucking works out, because you never know who's who. Like, I'm hooking up with a girl, right? And right as we were about to get down to business, she looked at me over her shoulder, and she was like, are you going to get me, Big Bad Wolf? <laughs> she was playing Little Red Riding Hood. I didn't get it, but I wanted to play along anyway, right? So I was like, Little Pig, Little Pig, let me in! <laughs> And that was the last time we hooked up. I did not get a return invite on that one. So like I, like I mentioned earlier, I've, uh, I'm married and I've been married for uh, four years in November. We just completed four years and it's good. Like the marriage is going really good. My wife and I have a great flow in the marriage. But uh, like there's some things about marriage they don't tell you before going in and like spicing things up gets weird. We were trying to spice things up the other day, right? And uh, she's like, she goes, let's do the list. I'm like, what? She goes, the, I thought she was going to ask me like my pet previous history list. I'm like, oh, I'm so fucked. Because I always made myself sound like I was better than I really am. So I'm like, shit. She's like, no, no, no. I want the list of celebrities that you would have sex with and then I won't get mad. Like, it's your freebie list. I'm like, awesome. So um, she's like, who's on your list? I'm like, Blake Lively from Gossip Girl. I love her. I think she's beautiful. Uh, Sofia Vergara from Modern Family. Great. Beautiful. Colombian. Curvy. Love her. And I want to put Kim Kardashian on there because I love Kim Kardashian, but I'm scared of her. And it's not that I'm scared of her beauty. It's that she's been with Ray J and Reggie Bush. Like, I can't follow that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm more of an adequate down below, but I'm definitely not Ray J or Reggie Bush. I saw the video, I'm not gonna measure up. Like, my dick is like Scottie Pippen. <laughs> like, it can get the job done, but everybody missed Michael Jordan. <laughs> but there's things about marriage that they don't tell you before you get into it. Uh, like, when you're dating a woman, guys, like, you see your girlfriend two or three times a week. Turns out, those are the days she shaves her legs. Like, her legs are not always going to be that smooth, so it's shocking when you climb into bed and feel that razor-sharp porcupine quill for the first time. But, like, men, we're no better either, because of all the sleep farting we do. Or so my wife tells me. Like, you ever fart so loud you wake yourself up? That's an impressive accomplishment. But you can't share that with your woman, not really, because you know it woke her up too, and now she's pissed off. Fuck off! So what do you do? You act like it's Jurassic Park, right? You're like, if I don't move, she won't know I'm here. But by far, like, the biggest casualty of any committed relationship, it's going to be oral sex, and nobody gives you that heads up. One guy at it. <laughs> but it's frustrating, and like I found out the best way to deal with it is in the form of a song. I have whacked away the hours, I've taken ice cold showers, it's driving me insane. But though the sex is lacking, I can quickly stop my whacking if she only gave me brain. <laughs> Her sex drives such a riddle that I am forced to fiddle and relieve my blue ball pain. I know that you're thinking I'm a freak who likes the spankings, but I really just want brain. Oh, why? I wish I knew why. It makes her feel like a whore, doing things she's never done before. Instead, I'll sit and jerk some more. I wish I could lick her muffin, I'd give her a good stuffin', I'd make her scream my name. And even though it's scary, I can eat it when it's hairy if she only gave me brain. <laughs> Thanks guys, that's my talk. Thank you Crown Point, that's been awesome. Have a great night, everyone drive home safe. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up again for Salty Peters.
He's got the CD, Salty Breeders, Bring the Ruckus, which I think is a hardcore title. It's a beautiful deal. Five bucks if you guys want to hear Salty Breeders in an extended version of his hilarious set. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah? I had a good time. Everybody was funny. Nobody accosted the camera. It was good. It worked out well. Only a few people get that. Reference Woody didn't fall off the couch today. That was always good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our show.